This is an update on my 29 gallon custom bio cube sump. Uh, this obviously isn't the sump, this is the tank. But this is what I spent the majority of the weekend on. Uh, I got the holes drilled out for it. So I have installed the overflow box, the two returns. Drilling the glass out was uh, was a harrowing thing. I've never done any glass drilling before, so the first hole took quite a while. The second hole, using the better BRS uh, bit versus the one that comes with the eShops one, uh, went a little little bit quicker, a little bit easier. In addition, the hole was small smaller, so there was less travel distance. So the hole drilled out a little bit quicker. And then, like everything else, by the time you get to the third one, it was really easy, really, really quick, and came out probably the best. Uh, the tank's been filled up to this level overnight, no leaks, no nothing. I did have a concern that when I pulled out the separator, you know, if you got one of these, uh, when I pulled out the separator, I thought I had developed a leak in the seals down here, but it turned out it was just a culmination of all the water I had sprayed while I was uh, drilling out the hole. So uh, yeah, I, I drilled out a running plate in place tank. I mean, obviously I, I've turned my tank uh, 90 degrees to uh, work on it this week and do all this stuff so I had access to the back. Uh, but I did drill it out with everybody in here. Uh, I dropped the water level. For the first two holes, the tank was actually just running at its regular level. I actually, I hadn't removed the separator yet, so I just dropped the water level and uh, dropped it down to roughly in there while I drilled it out, drilled out these two holes. And then after I drilled out these two holes, I removed the insert, which was actually pretty easy, and I definitely didn't disrupt my seal removing it. And then once I got that out, I just dropped the entire level of the tank and then uh, drilled this one. It was a hell of a mess in there while I was removing that piece. But my tank's pretty cool, so it cleared up overnight. I'm running it right now on minimal life support. Minimal life support to me is some sort of um, nutrient export. I'm using uh, granulated ferric oxide and carbon in that. Um, Heating, heating and cooling, that's minimal life support. Uh, some sort of filtration, mechanical, so I got it running through the in-tank uh, stack that I had in the back of this originally, and uh, a circulation pump. So that's minimal life support to me, and, and oh, also air, because I don't have a skimmer in here or anything at the moment. I've got air stone, an air stone running in there just a, a little bit of gas exchange and try to oxygenate the water. But, uh, so what else? Uh, this piece, I was never really happy with the stability of the BioCube stand. I mean, I really like the stand, but it wobbled a little bit. The, um, there wasn't a whole lot in the way of structural support to keep it from uh, shifting la uh, laterally. Or horizontally sorry um so what i did was i cut out this piece it's a uh, i think it's half inch or three quarter inch five eighths and uh i ran a silicone and i nailed it so it's it's on there really good i peeled off the plastic strip that was uh, on the trim but uh so it's tied into that real good so now i have that horizontal support and it'll be a lot more structurally sound and that'll also be what I drill through and mount my plumbing for all this stuff up to. Um, if you've been watching, you're probably wondering why my pipes come up like this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to run off of this a, uh, fusion, uh, or a uh, Chato reactor. Uh, not for the purpose of growing Chato because I've got my sump in there to do that but for the purpose of growing copepods that can get from their nesting area to the tank without passing through a pump uh, to feed the mandarin that's in there. So um, I needed this all to be up here so if ever in a power outage my, my check valve fails and it decides to suck the tank down and maybe I miscalculated something, I don't want it to suck the reactor dry. I would rather it 
drain out through here and and then just stop. I'll, I'm, I'm debating between running a separate line off of here as a uh, as a uh, siphon break. But uh, that was my my thought with this, and that's why that looks like this, and that's why it comes up and over here so that it doesn't drain the tank um, even down a little bit. I really don't want to overflow the sump. Not that I'm concerned about overflowing it onto the water, or sorry, overflowing water onto the ground because I calculated for that. What I don't want is my entire sump getting wrecked, knocking filters around, popping the chato up, uh, any craziness to go on if I can prevent it. Um, I've also thrown down a lot of unions into these so that I can disassemble it. It's actually all just pressed together really tight right now. It's actually not glued yet. Um, but I'll be able to gain, gain access to the uh, check valve if I ever want to swap it out for something better down the road, um, like a Y valve or something like that. Um, but I'm going to try to incorporate as many unions into it as I can. So one inch up to here, then it goes to three quarter for both of these. Then when it goes into the tank, it goes to a lock line three quarter to two half inch splitters. Um, so that it's all stepped down appropriately. This will be throttled to almost nothing just to keep water circulating through that reactor. Um, so half of one inch volume wise is three quarter. So I split it from one inch to two three quarters. Half of three quarter volume wise is half inch, so I've got two half inches. So I'm trying to keep it from generating more pressure than is necessary. I just want flows. A little bit of tank, I don't need a ton of flow. I just want it to be moving. Well, I, I want circulation and decent flow without just wrecking the tank, so I don't want it to come out under pressure. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, <clears throat> I've already noticed the additional space. That is really awesome. Um, the fish have already gone back there and checked it out. And I noticed as by the time the water cleared last night from removing that wall, um, a lot of my inhabitants had already started to uh, go back here and venture around. It was really neat getting to see the back of this bio cube after sitting there for, you know, covered up for three years, you know, as a part of it. There you go, there's some critters in there. Um, all the, f uh, these, uh, fan filters. I'm going to try to recover as many as I can. Hi guys. Yep. So they're all digging the new area and, uh, the tank's in really good shape. Everybody's really happy. All my corals came out this morning. Um, some are, some are a little unhappy about the predicament that they've been put into, but, uh, they're all handling it really well. So the hope is throughout the day today, um, as much as I can, glue all this stuff together, get the uh, sump into the bottom of there, get it all plumbed up. I'm hoping to have this done within the next day or two, get it turned, get it put back where it goes. Um, I will note that it wasn't in my original intent over the weekend to remove this divider for the back, but I discovered that the silicone that they used was really kind of weak, so it was a lot less difficult to remove than I would thought it was going to be, so I just went ahead and went for it. Um, again, I did all of this stuff over the weekend with uh, with the tank live, so don't anybody notify PETA because the fish, the fish did not dig the drill. I kept seeing them come up to the edge here and what are you doing so but they dig it now because this tank's going to get quieter and quieter progressively and they'll dig that instead of having i think i had four motors on the back of this thing so there's only going to be one pump running the whole system now so it'll be a lot quieter but uh that's kind of what i got wanted to give an update on it and show you where i'm currently at for all you uh Anybody that's got a BioCube, if you like the BioCube, which I do, I didn't want to go to a bigger tank because I really love my little BioCube and the way it looks in my living room. Uh, so if you do like it, you can do better. I will note I did the math this morning and with all of this removed, when I fill it up as high as I'm going to fill it and everything, the internal volume of this is really only 23 and a half gallons. Maybe just a hair more, I cut it off like right here, so this bow may give you a quart, maybe. 
but uh, it's actually when you take the whole thing apart it's 23 gallons of volume on the inside 23 and a half so now I'm going to be using every inch of that for the most part so definitely worth it if you have the BioCube and you've been considering this. So far everything's going good. The next video I do will probably be post installation, probably before I turn it, give you an overview of how it goes. I may still still have to make some modifications to different things, but that's just part of the game. And then uh, here's the sump, still rocking. That's the Chato that I. That's a combination of what was growing in here, in addition to what I took out of the main display tank. What what I what I was growing in the back. So uh, that's quite a bit there now. Again, the zip ties are to kind of keep it towards the bottom. Try to keep it just just above neutral or just below neutrally buoyant, so it doesn't get up there in the, the rafters and whatnot. But uh, everything's running smooth so far. I will uh keep you keep keep you guys updated. Thanks for watching.